is Julia Doty from Adventure Geek slash The Camino Talk Show. Um, and today's talk is all about the Camino. And what better way of talking about the Camino but actually talking with true pilgrims. People who have been there and done it and perhaps got the t-shirt. Show me t-shirt. Ta-da! <laughs> Ta-da! Or got the compass there, as I should say. That is brilliant. That's got all the names on it as well, Eric. Absolutely. From Monses Bias to Santiago de Compostela. Fantastic. Um, okay, so if you're not sure what the Camino is about, so this is for the guys out there, and this talk show really is for people who perhaps want to know a little bit more about the Camino, have got some burning questions, or perhaps you just want to go down memory lane and do a little bit of reminiscing, which I'm sure we're going to do today. Um, mm. But if you're not sure what the Camino is, it's a trek across northern Spain, uh, and you end up over, go over mountains, you go through vineyards, you go through the Meseta, which we're going to talk about as well today, and you end up at Santiago de Compostela, where you get your famous uh, credential, which I haven't got with me today, and yet all these I stamps I have one on. with me. Have you? I have one here at my office. Have you in your office? Have you, yeah. Is it nearby? Yeah. Oh, you got Hey, that's the certificate. Fantastic. Mine's still in the tube. Yeah, I haven't got I mine in the tube. You mean the credential. Which is the passport. So show yeah. the stamps as well. Um... Yeah, and you get stamps as you go along. Fantastic. <laughs> Brilliant. And then you hand that in and you get your certificate when Thanks. you've proven that you've walked all that journey. Now, originally, a lot of people walk the Camino um, as a pilgrimage, which yeah. obviously people are still walking it as a pilgrimage. But a lot of people don't just natu naturally walk it for religious reasons, although a mm. lot of people do. Uh, but there are other reasons. And again, that's something else that we're going to explore today. Mm. Anyway, I have got the fantastic Eric Optenberg. Is that how you is that how you pronounce your name? Have I said that right? It sounds really Dutch. Optenberg. Optenberg. Op it does. Or more in Dutch, Optenberg. Optenberg. Did I say that right? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to read out a little bit that I wrote about you. Is that okay with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So for you guys out there, so I first met Eric in October 2017, and I was really nervous. You might not have known this, Eric, but I was really <laughs> nervous as it was my so first solo trip. I'd never done anything on my own before. Um, and I was sitting next to you at the Orison up in the Pyrenees, yes. and that was the first night that we met, and it was probably the best thing that, that could ever have happened to me. So for those of you who don't know Eric, Eric is one of these people that has an infectious personality. You certainly yeah. ooze creativity, which I didn't know that's what you did when uh, we first met. Uh, and everything about you is... Is I don't know, you just warm to you naturally. And I think a lot of people sort of, you become like a magnet to people throughout the Camino. And I'm sure I'm not the only person that felt like that. And I've spoken to other pilgrims who also feel like that about you. Um, but you did turn my world upside down. And after a pizza massage, which we <laughs> will be, I'll let you explain what that is in a second. Yeah. Uh, your parting words to me as I left you in the Grogno. Uh, mm. And we had an amazing day with that bikes. Do you remember the bikes? Oh, yeah. Yeah, really. <laughs> that was really good. Um, yeah. You told me, Julia, go and download this book or go and buy this book off of Amazon. It's called The Artist Way by Julia Cameron. And I sort of parked it. I, I had it printed on my brain and I'd made a little note of it on my phone. That's the first thing I did when I got back. And that 12-week creative writing program was something that really shifted my mind. And, you know, they say the Camino provides... Uh, and you was like my Camino angel. So thank you for that. Let me just say that to start with. And uh, everyone, please, if you're watching this live, uh, please say hello to Eric because uh, he's, he's a saviour. So how are you doing then? Good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you again. That's <laughs> about one year ago that we have met. It is, yeah. It was, um, <laughs> I can't remember, it was in October anyway that we met. So we're not far Excellent. off not for half a year and even though we've talked on email and you know facebook and various things like that we've not actually seen each other so when you actually came on it's like there he is <laughs> i don't know if that's <laughs> how you felt anyway so should we get into some questions i've sent you some questions so for you guys so just so you know you know complete authenticity here i've sent some questions over but i have said to eric you know if we go off on tangent then that's fine and i'm half expecting that as well i want this to be very authentic very true and you know we'll just see where where it, where it takes us okay yeah okay. so my first question <laughs> is dum, da -dum, dum, dum. so do you remember how you first heard about the camino yes i do and that's 
don't you don't believe it, but it's thirty years ago. Thirty. It's th- so you must 31. have been what? Ten? No. It less was than in that. Eight, eighty-seven. So thirty years ago. Wow. I, yeah, I had my summer vacation in the Pyrenees in Saint Jean Pied de Port, and it was the first time I saw people walking with their backpack and um, doing things I've never seen before, uh, making a long distance walk. Uh, I, I I heard that they were starting or they were on a track for Santiago de Compostela. That catched my attention, and the years after, I went several times to the north northern part of Spain for my summer vacation, and I saw them again and again and again. I saw them walking, and that started my own wish to do a long-distance walk once myself. Right, okay. And it wasn't until how many years later before you did it? Last year. So was was last year was your first one? It was my first long-distance walk. Uh, I, did, I did some, uh, yeah, not a lot. I did some distance walks in Holland. Okay, so we ought to tell the guys actually where you're from uh, and a little bit of your background. So do you want to tell your story? Yeah, oh yeah. Where do you want to start me? <laughs> so when, <laughs> what's your name? And where, you, don't, you don't have blind date. Do you have blind date in, in Holland? A blind date? No, hmm? there's, a, there's a famous lady called Scylla Black. Lots of people will be laughing now. And it's oh, really? like, yeah, she does like blind date thing. And it's like, what's your name? Where would you come from? Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm doing a Scylla uh, Black. What's your name? Where did you come from? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> My name is Erik Optenberg. <laughs> Sounds Dutch, and that means I'm from Holland. I I'm at the age uh, 50 plus, and last year I walked the Camino because uh, I wanted to do uh, a long-distance walk on my own. But, okay. uh, you will ask me some things about it. I certainly uh, will. Okay, so the routes you walked, so you walked the French routes? Yeah, I walk, there are a lot, lots of ways to Santiago de Compostela, and I walked the French, the French route. Yeah, Which and is started in Pyrenees, in uh, where lots of people are starting their Camino. Uh, Camino is the way for the way, and then the, the explanation for that. And from there, it's about one, no, eight hundred kilometers to Santiago in Saint Jean Pied de Port, and that's I- where you have met. Yeah. Am I right in thinking as well, you didn't finish in Santiago, because did you meet your wife there and then you walked yeah. to Finisterre and Muxia? Exactly, yeah. So after 40 days, I, I ended up in Santiago de Compostela, and my wife arrived two, three days after. Wow. And then we spent one week to, to go on beyond Santiago to Finisterre or Fistera and Muxia, And that's a kind of um, um, the cherry on the cake, yeah. Cool, okay. So uh, we we ought to tell people about the the pizza massage because I've mentioned it and people are probably thinking, what on earth is she talking about? Yeah. So, and Laura, if you're listening to this, which hopefully you will, she experienced a pizza massage as well, which was probably one of the most wonderful things I've ever had. So do you want to explain what a pizza massage is and the reasons you were doing that? I will explain a bit. Um, (laughs) It was somewhere in the mountains in a little village uh, around lunch, lunchtime, and it was warm, it was a hot day, and we all were very tired and needed to to walk on later. Uh, we needed to do some more distance. And um, we were a bit lazy and we didn't like to move on at that moment. So I was thinking about energizing people, which I do sometimes in my work as a creativity professional, where we and I am teaching people how to yeah be more a little bit more creative and more impactful in your life and sometimes we are using an energizer and a pizza massage is a way that um we use to energize people so what happened is we were with about 10 i remember and i asked you uh, all to make a cue um where we were uh, at the back side of someone's shoulders and then um, i started that pizza massage by Imagining that we all were a cook preparing a pizza and the backside of the one in front of you is your pizza or your plate or the dough. And it started with massaging the dough and making it to make it ready for a pizza. And, And then it ends up in a massage where 
people are adding some tomato, some onion and some cheese and it's hilarious. It, it was just hilarious and talk about the energy in the room just going sky oh. high as everyone's massaging people's backs, yeah. you know, putting yeah. all this different stuff on people's backs. It was just brilliant. It was like, how on earth did you come up with that? And that, that was when you told me about the TED Talk. Yeah. And when I was on the bus going, you know, I had, I had a, a late thing. I had to go on a bus and I missed you all doing the wine talk. Yeah, I remember. Uh, I was sitting on that bus watching your TED Talk that night. <laughs> you did. Yeah, so you kept me company even though you didn't realise you were keeping me company. So I'll put a link in the notes below um, to people to watch that talk if that's okay with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's, it's very, very inspirational. But yeah, talk about energy. So can you imagine this guy being along with you on the Camino? Totally <laughs> amazing. Okay, so um, reasons yeah. for walking the Camino. Should I ask that? You don't have to answer that one if you don't want to, because sometimes I appreciate that it is a bit personal. Yeah. But, you know, is it spiritual, yeah. physical? Was it just an adventure? It can be very personal. And sometimes people are walking the Camino because they lost um, their husband or their wife or parents or children or get into a divorce. Some horrible stories. But in my case, there were no horrible stories. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was looking for being a time on my own, like uh, a time out. Or like a kind of, what's the word for that, uh, a reset. Um, or uh, later on, I read somewhere, a purification of your soul. That's a and good word. I'm going to write that down. Purification of the soul. I yeah. love that. Okay. Did you find, did you find that? I, I've, um, yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, no, really. And, but don't make it too big on that. Um, I did. I, I was walking the Camino for for fifty days totally, and um, the days after the Camino or the weeks after the Camino, that purification became a little bit more clearer to me. And then it's not so um, complex or um, difficult. It's like being a little bit more wiser. Um, a little bit more aware of life and important things and judging not so much or less judgment about what's happening around to me and uh, it's yeah purification means it's a little bit more clear inside and i met perhaps you met them too the guys from buffalo from the us and he was a cook and he was telling he was looking for his true creative potential Ooh. And your true potential, and that you. sounds also a little bit purification of the soul. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, yeah. To, and to meet you, a master of creativity, and that was what he was looking for, that was meant to be, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> <laughs> they actually say there's a well-known saying for the Camino is that your true Camino starts when you get home. And that was certainly right for me. Was, was mm -hmm. that right for you? Yeah, it's, yeah, absolutely, definitely, yeah. But then uh, you're, you're called back, so you mm -hmm. end up going back on the Camino, and I've been, this, I'm going again in October, it's a different, mm -hmm. com different Camino, and that will be my fifth Camino, Yeah. which is just crazy, considering, mm -hmm. you know, I started in 2016, with, mm -hmm. different, with different people doing different things, but do you think you learn different lessons every time you go back? I mean, how many of you, you done now, you've done... Yeah, I did um, a week of the Northern Camino, and in a, in a month I'm walking the Portuguese Camino from Porto to Santiago, and I, I didn't walk so much other Caminos, but I remember a talk with a man last year, no, this year in Northern Spain, in Santander, and he was telling that it was his fourth Camino. And he said, every Camino is different. Yeah. Every yeah. Camino has different layers, has a different purpose, and helps to clarify some things about your life. Yeah. Would, would you say that, are you a spiritual person or a religious person? How would you describe yourself? Oh, these are good questions. Ah, see, they're coming to me as I'm talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The you spiritual to... part is a big part for me. And uh, regarding the Camino, 
Um, you can look at it in different ways. Uh, it can be a, a physical challenge, just walking 1,000 kilometers. And it can be an emotional challenge and to go through things in your life and to wonder and how to react on that. And it can also be a spiritual tour where you're wondering or I'm wondering about my potential and the way I am meaningful in my life and meaningful for other people and doing the right things in life. And that's, for me, very connected to spirituality. Absolutely. I'm 100% with you. Did, oh, yeah. you, did you have any... Um, have you heard of thin places? They call it thin places? Thin places? What do you mean by that? Okay, so there's certain elements along the Camino where they say that the spiritual world is very in line with the current world, mm -hmm. and where you sort of feel that sometimes it would cross over. Does that... Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, yeah. And they call it a thin place. So there's mm. certain, like the Cristofero is classed yeah. as a thin place. And that was the most bizarre experience of my life. I, I'm not a cry type person. And I, I walked up and I thought, oh, okay, that's like a telegraph pole with a load of sticks around it. But actually, it's like you walk into another zone as you get to it. And mm. you, I was overcome with emotion and it was like something that opened in me when I just did that. So did you experience any thin places along the Camino? Yeah, many, many of them. Yeah. And sometimes they were connected to a church or a chapel or a cloister. And sometimes it's, it was just the sunrise or sunset or a field of stars. Yeah. Uh, or the combination of some music with darkness or light or sun, or it was the scenery. It was perhaps the whole Camino has a more thin layer than everywhere. Absolutely. I think that, that as well, I think the Camino made me open my eyes to more things. Mm -hmm. There was one particular place where there was all this old, like, agricultural machinery. Yeah. And the way that the sun shone on it, the way that they had created this machinery, gave shadows of pilgrims walking. Wow. And uh, we got to the... I, I was going, oh, my God, oh, my God. And I was taking photos saying, this is amazing. And mm -hmm. we got to the next cafe. No, yeah. Nobody else had seen that. Mm -hmm. And it was like, how could you not see it? It was just like so obvious. That's, that's, it was just amazing. And I was showing everyone my photos Mm -hmm. it, I, but I think walking the Camino certainly made me a little bit more in tune to my surroundings, like looking to see what, what's happening around. Absolutely. That, that makes sense to me too. Yeah. Um, all senses are loud present. Right? It's about the hearing, it's about the smell, it's about the taste, it's about what you, what you see. And it reminds me of a, a famous... Um, definition or quote in creativity which makes sense to the Camino as well that creativity is looking at the ordinary and seeing the extraordinary oh, I love that and that's exactly what happened to me on the Camino that for some people it's sometimes the ordinary and I was very very much aware of the extraordinary during the Camino and it can be such an example as you told me uh, about the shadows, that you see some things that other people, which are very obvious at that moment for you, but haven't seen, haven't been seen by other people. I know, and sometimes I was like, uh, was it? I think it was with with you. Do you remember when we was at the Orison and there was two German guys, Walter and someone else? Mm -hmm. and literally, they only walked from. I only met them at the Orison, and then they went home um, the following yeah. day at Roncesvalles. Yeah. And I, I walked with them that day because it was absolutely tipping it down with rain. Um, but anyway, Walter says to me, Julia, when we get to Roncesvalles, I want to do something for you. I'd only met them that day. Mm -hmm. And um, he, they, we went into the church in, in Roncesvalles and there was nobody in there at all. And he went up and stood at the altar and got out his harmonica and played me a song just for me. And there was no one else in this and it was just like, oh, my God. And the tears were rolling down my face. I didn't even know what the song was. Yeah. And then they went home the next day, and it was as if they as if they weren't real. 
Do you know what I mean? It's very, very unusual, but yeah, it's a completely amazing story. See, guys, if you're listening to this, these are the sort of stories that you get from the Camino. You get different stories every time you go because you meet different people and everyone has a story. So. That reminds me of a, 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 a crying moment at the Camino. A crying uh, moment. Yeah, yes. Um, that morning we uh, was walking with Laura and um, Paul was with us. No, we, I, I was only with Laura at that time. Paul, he had, a, he had some troubles with his legs. And we wanted to drink a coffee at the end of the village. Um, we agreed on that. But at the entrance of the village, we saw a little bar and it was open. So we thought, okay, let's have a coffee here. Okay. We drank a coffee, we went on through the village, and we passed by a church which was just opened, just a few minutes. So if we had had a coffee at the end of the village, the church would be closed at that moment. We went into that church, and it was just opened as a museum, a museum about the secrets of the Camino. <gasps> and it was a tour around seven stages in the church which explained about history, about meaning, about spirituality. And there was a, an, an, a video projection on the ceiling of the church. <laughs> Amazing. And it helped me to understand. It was a ah, halfway. And it helped me to understand on a much deeper level what a Camino can be for me and other people as well. Oh, that's so amazing. If we hadn't drunk that coffee at the entrance of the village, we had missed that opportunity. And other people, nobody had seen that church, which we were talking about uh, that evening. Everybody went through the village without visiting it. That was meant to be. Oh, yeah. my God. That's, that sent shivers down my spine. That's <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Right, so what do you think other people are going to need to know about the Camino? So someone that hasn't walked the Camino before. Should we do some... What I class as boring stuff. So should we do the like what? We're well not boring stuff, but what pack did you use and weight did you carry? Because they're the sort of things I know that I was obsessed with before I went on the Camino. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you know the the spiritual stuff I just think is amazing, and I could talk about that all the time. But should we get to some of the gear stuff? Was was you carrying a lot of weight or? No, no. I I, I was also very much into lowering the weight of my backpack in the weeks before and my wife get mad of it she couldn't <laughs> see and hear anymore how i was dealing with t-shirts and trousers and weighting it and making decisions and putting things out of my backpack and other things in it was to me it was very interesting because i wanted to be with as less luggage as possible so with that, i ended up with nine kilos nine kilos okay nine kilos. well i don't yeah. know what that is in pounds we're no. english you know so what, what is yeah that's not so much <laughs> that's, that's really light isn't it it's quite light it's not super light but quite light yeah okay and did you take anything with you that you perhaps regretted that you didn't use can you remember yeah only a few things yeah um, I took a little book to read with me, okay, and I didn't read it at all. <laughs> well, that's a good sign. And another thing I took with me was a rain poncho. Yeah, I don't recall you ever wearing a rain poncho. No, I had a rain jacket, and my backpack had a kind of thing to cover it, a rain cover, and that's enough. So you didn't so, need your poncho? No, but a poncho is 300 grams, so you have to re <laughs> recount what it is. But there were a few things which, only a few things which I didn't use. Okay. Yeah. And you so I did rework in a good way. And what was your luxury item? Can you remember? I, I, I took some stuff with me next to, uh, but I, I will show you one of my luxuries. A sit pad. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's soft. And it's not wet, and it's warm if it needs to be warm, especially when it's rainy weather. And that was one of my luxury items, and it doesn't weigh anything. So, for so, those people who don't know what on earth it is you're showing them, what what do you what do you use that for? To sit on it. To, yeah. Okay. So yeah. I think some people call it a butt pad. A butt pad. Oh, <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I thought it was something like a seat mat. 
Seat mat. That sounds better. Yeah, and a I seat also mat. Put on, put on my feet when the floor when I put off put off my shoes and my socks, which is a good advice in order to uh, avoid blisters. Uh, several times a day to put off your shoes, and when it was a little bit cold on the floor, uh, I used my seat mat <laughs> to put on uh, to put on my feet. <laughs> so that that's luxury without weight. Because we were walking in October, so it was quite chilly in the mornings. It was quite cold, wasn't it? It was. Cool. Okay, okay. okay. Um, so let's go into some of the other questions. So food, actually, you could talk about – I had the best experience with food whilst I was with you because you speak <laughs> fantastic Spanish. Mm, and that's a, good, that's a good tip. To always get together with someone that speaks good Spanish because – you you wasn't doing like the main places. You find these little cafes in the middle of nowhere on these little back streets that have just amazing food. Yeah. And you ordered yeah. for me. Do you? I don't. You won't remember, but I remember what you ordered for me. Do you remember? Um, it was the the rabbit. Yes. How do you remember that? Um, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. Yeah. It was the paella with rabbit. <laughs> It was. It was. I'd never had rabbit before. Is it Coneca? No. Coneca. Coneca. That's it. I, I can. Yeah. I remember. So, the, what do you think to Spanish food? Um, I've been many times in Spain, so I've I've eaten a lot in Spain, and I I always like the local cuisine. So when I'm somewhere in somewhere in Spain, mostly I try to find a. A uh, regular menu del dia, where the local people are having having their meals, yeah. Yeah. and uh, it's mostly marked outside, so I can see what's on the menu, where you can choose from a starter or whatever. So, compared to the pilgrims' menus, which are plenty, where you have lots of to choose from, uh, I always preferred the more local approach. Okay. And, uh, if it if it was there, and when we were traveling together in the in, in the region of Logroño, we found a few terrific places. We certainly did. We certainly did. In, it seemed like in the middle of nowhere, but you just happened to see them, which was just brilliant. <laughs> so yeah, so the food was great. One of the foods that I tried, which was really bleh, was yeah. um, it was tripe. Do you know? It was like cow, yeah. cow stomach. I didn't know that's what I was eating. I took one mouthful and I thought, oh, I can't eat this. Mm. Have you ever had it? Uh, I've had it in France, but not Spain. It's not on a regular menu. So I think you have you have, have had luck that you found it. Yeah, I don't know if it is. Well, it was an experience. So, you know, Absolutely. <laughs> I'll, pu I'll put it down to experience. <laughs> okay. Right, what else have I got on my on my list? Uh, our burgers. Yeah, it's all about burgers. When you are traveling on the Camino, you have to sleep somewhere. And on that uh, St. James Camino, there are so many opportunities to sleep. And in summer, it can be very overcrowded, but out of the season, you can choose. And um, it's always a, an adventure where you are coming, when you are, where you are arriving. And uh, every alberg has something special. And did you stay in albergues when you got to Santiago, or did you splash out and upgrade yeah well when i arrived in santiago next to the cathedral there is a big monastery where they uh, offer uh, rooms for one or for two uh, for pilgrims it's a little bit uh, more priced than the regular albergs but it's still in pilgrim style okay. so okay. i didn't go to a huge hotel but i prefer to stay a little bit on my own in pilgrim style. And how did you feel when you walked into into the square at Santiago? And was you walking with people or did you did you walk in on your own? We arrived there with five that day uh, in the early morning because we decided to go to Monte de Gozo. That's about uh, five to ten kilometers uh, from Santiago. Did you stay at the, uh, the we called it the prison camp. Is that yeah. the, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. The, it, I, I don't remember exactly, but they have beds for 400 people or something. It's crazy. It's incredible. Crazy. And that night, there were only eight or ten. So it was desolated. 
And uh, in that early morning, we walked to Santiago. And first we had a cafe with some bread in uh, well, somewhere in the outskirts of Santiago because we, we wanted to slow down a bit. And we wanted to be there around noon because at noon there was a pilgrims um, celebration in the church. So that was the reason that we wanted to arrive in the early morning. Okay. And at that morning, when we came into the, when we arrived at the square, it felt a, a bit a double feeling, some happiness to arrive, and also the sadness that the forty days had gone by more uh, quick as I assumed they had to come by. So it was a mixed feeling with a glad feeling and sadness at the same time. But I was lucky that I was not in a hurry, so I could stay for a few days there. And lots of people have to go that day or the day after to go back home. And that's that's more sad. So I had the opportunity to come into the square several times and to visit the church several times and to embrace St. James several times and well, at the moments that when it was not so crowded. Yeah. So I, I liked very much to be in Santiago for a few days. Yeah, It is a very special place. Yeah, it is. I, I must admit, I think I felt more closure when I got to Finisterre or Fistera. Mm -hmm. So how did you feel when you got there? And obviously you was with your wife as well. And it made a difference. Yeah. It's a huge difference to walk on my own or to walk together with the two of us. So for us, it was a beautiful hike to go from Santiago to Fistera and to share all my stories and to tell her what happened to me and to be, to be together, to align together after those 40, 40 days. And uh, coming into Fistera, there was a beautiful sunset. Oh, we wow. went to oh, wow. the lighthouse and we were sitting together there and could admire the sunset and walk back to the little village, have dinner together. It was so intimate, so special to be there together. Yeah. Well, that's just amazing. That's just amazing. Brilliant. Mm. Okay. I think that's a really good place to sort of end the interview as well. Have you got have you got a special quote? Yeah. When you I, when you were no, no, mentioning that um, what what I did during my Camino was to send to my friends back home only once a week um, a sign that I was still alive. <laughs> okay. So I sent them a WhatsApp message together with a picture which summarized for me my impressions of that week. And I did that five times. And um, when you were mentioning the quote, came back to my mind again one of the quotes I encountered on the Camino. And that was in six words, the Camino breaks hearts and unites hearts. Oh. That was a, a special one. Yeah, I love that. I absolutely love that. I'm going to yeah. write these down for everybody who's watching this as well. I'll transcript it so that mm. we've so that we've got that, uh, and it will go through as a blog. So um, yeah, that's just amazing, yeah. Eric. I just want to say thank you. You've just been absolutely fantastic. Um, this is going to go live on the 26th of October. So if you guys are watching this live, um, are you available to be live then and listen and answer any questions yeah. anyone has? I'm on the road at that moment, but I will try to be. I will try to be online. Brilliant. If you're available, then that would be extra special. If not, you know, I'll be there to answer people's questions. But um, that all it just leaves me to say is, Bon Camino, because you're going again. <laughs> and I think we're missing each other by like about three or four days. I'll be in Santiago just before you. Oh no! I know. So next time we'll plan it better. That would be great. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Right. I need to disappear. I shall say yeah. bon camino and thank you so much for joining me today. It's just been truly awesome. It was a pleasure, really a pleasure to be with you also on Skype. Thank you. Uh, you take care. See you later. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. <laughs> I remember that one. <laughs> Ta-da. Bye-bye. Bon camino. Bon camino. <laughs>